next little catchment here, there's water's coming down the roads and feeding off this, and somewhere in the past, now this used to be sheep, and I don't know how many what numbers of sheep and like that, but those sheep would have to come back to the shearing sheds, and so this area historically somewhere in the past would have been hammered. So we've got no idea what would have been here, but we can see now all the spin effects. And as um, Annabelle said, this area's been burnt, but you can see a bit of stubble that's still here. Um, but anyhow, these little gully were quite active. And yeah, well, there's quite a few of them all the way down. But we selected this one yesterday, it just happened because it's close to the work Peter did in the other gully head. Um, and the idea was that, uh, you know, when the gullies twist and turn, like they're going like that, and then when they turn, they're undercutting under here, and that falls in and that sort of stuff. And I personally got no hesitation getting in a gully head like this and straighten it up. And that's basically what we did yesterday, just the first 50 metres. To get rid of the turns, there was a massive big hole in there. We could have hidden the Toyota Land Cruiser in and the big cuts. So just to tidy it up. But the soil was bought up. And you can see here all these dips and hollows. It looked pretty ugly. And just to make them, make, make them matter look pretty. Um, well, then the water's going to go back through that. It's, at the moment, it's all soft. I mean, nice to have a shower rain or a water truck and water it so it could have made it look pretty. But anyway... Um, the idea is water is going to fill it back through. Now instead of having a whole multitude of little humps and hollows and S-bends, now it can flow through like, like in that case there, that one's the fine water course. And instead of being a narrow little like cutting like that, it's now like that. So the water can spread out and take its time and hopefully a bit of vegetation that in it. And the optimal goal will be get and then build some gabions. Well, that's what that thing down there is. It's a roll of rocks, it's wrapped in wire netting and it acts as a filter. It's not designed to stop the water. It's designed, designed to stop the stuff that's in the water, the grass and the leaves and the kangaroo shit, whatever's in there. So it's a filter, same as your air filter is on your car and that sort of stuff. But anyway, we've done all we can to take the force out of the water, put it back down, it has to go down there, there's nowhere to go. We can't, we can steer it over that ridge into that creek, we can steer it right around in the next creek, but who's to say we're not just transferring the problem? So this is an historical thing caused in the last hundred years, we can never put it back to what it was, let's bend the rules and try to work into this. So in this case, basically tidy it up, a defined open channel, a bit better uh, habitat for the grass to get established and that sort of thing, a bit of better seed bed. Uh, down in the gully, there's a, but why I gave them to take the force out of it. And Annabelle's got a couple of wire net and just uh, that spin effects wrapped up in wire net and the drop down in the gully and behind. Now it's ongoing. If you can get a bucket of money out of grinding soil and build another hundred of these all down the gully and up the top and all around in here. So that's the idea of that. So that's all it was, just a cosmetic thing to pick one gully out of the hundreds that are here and try to clean the top up so Annabelle can monitor it over the next couple of years and see what happens at recovery or disasters or whatever. In the meantime, most of the water is coming down up through here. We've picked that up in that short condor bank, 75 metre condor bank that was surveyed at 0.3% slope. I come into the grader, I worked away from those pegs and took the topsoil out for three passes. I brought in subsoil to build the bank with and then spread the topsoil back over again. You know, it's only an inch deep, but that's the stuff that's got the seeds and that in it. So the water will hit that, flow along that channel, it comes into a big 20 metre pit, uh, uh, sill or pit, burrow pit, whatever it is on the end of that. It'll spill out of that. Unfortunately, because of the lay of the ground, it's only going to spill out in two or three places. In good level ground, it would have spilled out anywhere over that 20 metres. Because it's going to spill back out in a couple of places, that's where you put that shingle. But again, when it hits that, it's got to filter through that 100 mil layer of rock. So again, that'll take the force out. In a big rainfall event, some of that, sh it's just sand and that, but some of that sand, that doesn't matter. At least it's coming back down, it's going to fill in any hollows and that sort of thing. But everything was done here to take the force out of the water to slow it down and put it back into that creek. Now up above, you can see another line of pickets right up above. One of the main implements that we used in our soil, build, soil, soil uh, rehab work in the Territory was in a post disc plough. And it was basically a three point leakage implement with two big 36 inch discs that came in on a, like the tractors here, the plough's on the back of that, three, two big discs like that. And it cut a trench either side and threw the loose soil up in the middle. So failing, we haven't got a post disc plough, there's eight or ten of them sitting 1500 k east of here and have been used the last 20 years. So failing that, we just got into the grader, we pegged the condor line and we did a bit of work with the grader by dropping the corner and blade in and then lifting it out again. But what we did with that, so we had our survey pegs right across, so I dropped the blade in for 10 metres and out for two, all the way through. When I come back, it's like brickwork. So as the water flows come down, they'll hit that trench. Behind the trench is the seed bed. When that trench is full, it'll flow around and hit the next one. So again, all the water, we're getting the opportunity to, to soak into the ground. And as somebody said this morning about lowering ground temperatures, get water to, 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 fill, to stay there, not flowing across. Um, 
Yeah, so, but in one long run, if that water comes down and hits that and it breaches, so all that water's been channeled to here, comes through here, we might be creating a washout. So we don't put in long runs. So 10 metres in and 2 metres out. Uh, it's a terrible thing for operators on three-point three linkage machines, because most three-point linkage is back here. So if you're doing a couple hundred hectares, by the end of the day, you just can't move your arm. So you've got to re re redesign your arm so it's out there, so you can go like that. But uh, say so for that exercise, we put in half an hour up there, the grader, just to sort of simulate the opposed to this plough work. But that's what it's designed to do. As the water comes off the back up the hill there, comes this way, it hits that brickwork, filters its way through. Majority of it, very little will get through to this bottom end. It's going to be trapped, especially these soft, fragile soils like this. There won't be, you know, a hard clay pan. Um, it might soak in, but here, given the, it's given the opportunity to, to penetrate and soak in, break the crust. So, well, that's it in a nutshell. Um, How long do you keep cattle off? She can put cattle back anywhere she likes. That's the beauty of that, is that, you know, you talk about water ponding and all that sort of stuff. Um, water ponding is just a series of horseshoes, like on a big clay pan. Might be like that. You've got a series of horseshoes all the way down. Um, really effective, but very costly. Now, if you're going to go into water ponding, and they're designed to hold 100 mil of water, four inches of water. But if you're going to go down, that's like on the old days, the last time I did it, it was about $50 a hectare. So if you want to put, do that sort of work, you need to lock it off, keep control, and then harvest whatever you plant on it, i.e. sorghum or bloody whatever you plant in there, to make it economic. But that stuff there, you can put cattle back on straight away, it doesn't make any difference because there's nothing to destroy. Like with the brick, that little br bit of brickwork, yeah, you know, they'll walk through it. Because there's a... That's, that's the thing there, is if you're going to seed it, you've got to give it a good wet season to get established and give it time to establish, that's right. But in this case, they weren't seeded. Um, it'd be, it, it, Annabelle would have loved having a couple hundred kilos of seeds that we broadcast over the flat, but we haven't got it. I'm going to seed it tomorrow. Right? Yeah, well, but that's it.